OK, we've looked at quite a few ways of differentiating functions and we've developed our skills there. We've looked at some various uh, uses of it. Another very, very important uh, concept that comes out of uh, differentiation is the idea of a rate of change. Now, we've referred a lot to dy by dx as the gradient. And we've used the f dash dx notation as well. And we've talked about the gradient function. But in effect, what is gradient measuring? Well, clearly, the gradients along this graph are lower than the gradients on that graph. And so in terms of y, the y values on the pink curve are increasing much quicker than the y values on that curve. In other words, the rate at which they are climbing with respect to the distance travelled along here is different for these two different curves. So we could argue then that gradient measures the rate of change of y as x changes. And we often say that dy dx is the rate of change of y with respect to x. <clears throat> now, the word rate in ordinary life is probably much more likely to be associated with time. So we talk about a speed of 10 meters per second. That means that the rate at which I am traveling, the rate is 10 meters every second. And time in our coordinate system is often denoted by t and often we will find that t is the horizontal axis uh, along there. So we can now start to use this concept of differentiation in a slightly more practical situation. Let's imagine some sort of spillage of liquid and this spillage is uh, increasing in size. And I want to, let's decide that it's width apart there, uh, is D, and that it's width apart there, let's call that, I don't know, H, something like that. And that I've got a way of measuring the area of that spillage. <clears throat> so as time passes on, the spillage gets bigger. And I could plot a graph of that spillage. And it might be doing something like that. Now what would that represent? Well supposing that represented the area of the spillage. Because I've got t down here, <clears throat> then I could talk about a formula for the area of the spillage in terms of the time. So it might be something like um, a equals 40 squared plus 70 plus 8. square metres. And it may be that I want to know how quickly that spillage is increasing. And supposing i have desperate to stop this thing and I want to know where it's got to after 20 seconds, how quickly 
uh, is that, or so I think it's a chemical spillage of some sort, how quickly is that spillage increasing? Well, I can use all this idea here of, of differentiation rates of change because I can work out dA by dt. So if I differentiate this, I get 8t plus 7. So when t is 20, dA by dt is 8 times 20 plus 7, which is 167 square meters per second. So this tells me something incredibly useful. It tells me that after 20 seconds, the rate at which the area of this spillage is increasing round here is 167 square meters every second. And of course that'll change because this isn't a straight line. And so the beauty of the differentiation is that it enables us to get some idea of what happens in changing situations. And you will meet many more examples like this. So the thing to watch out for is, is there time in the question? If there is, you're likely to be doing a, a something by dt and uh, evaluating a rate at which, uh, at which something is changing. So I'm sure in our work we'll come across lots more examples of this type of thing. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.